A trail of destruction. Massive wildfires killed at least 31 people as flames sweep across northern and southern California. Attacked with a pipe, a Portland police officer is in the hospital this morning after being struck in the head, and he wasn't the only victim. And could Portland become the latest city to restrict the use of plastic straws? City Council is preparing to vote this week, and we want to know what you think about it. Plus, people in Washington are rushing to buy firearms as new gun rules are about to take effect. Coming up in our Good to Know segment, we'll explain how this new gun control initiative works. Also, we're kicking off a week of audience participation here on the Sunrise <laughs> Show. So we'll have a taste test here this morning. The Ooh. first of five viewer Thanksgiving recipes on our well, desk uh, to sample. That's coming up at 6.15. Good morning. Not too many delays out there. You can see all of our drive times are where they should be. Well, we do have a stall inside the Vista Ridge Tunnel. This is headed westbound and the right lane is blocked. But we do have a big closure in Troutdale. The Troutdale Bridge is closed over the Sandy River. So I-84 or uh, the Stark Street Bridge are your detours this morning. Okay, Lacey, thank you. Well, happy Monday. And we want to thank all our men and women who serve in honor of the Veterans Day holiday. Chris, I know a lot of people will be out at ceremonies this morning. A little windy. Wind, a lot windy, actually. Yeah, windy. yeah wind advisory still a effect for the Portland Vancouver metro area and I wanted to show you this live picture once again from Yaquina Bay. This is Newport and I think you can see the boats there rocking in the breeze. It's even windy at the Oregon coast today, but those winds will subside at the beach. Not so much in the metro area. So for the kiddos heading off to the school uh, school bus stops this morning, uh, it'll be a breezy day, breezy all day long. In fact, temperatures in the low 40s right now warming to the mid 50s this afternoon. Once we get through that windy sunshine today, clouds roll in tomorrow. Our next chance of rain shows up on future cast later tomorrow night. I'll break that down in more detail in just a bit, guys. Chris, thank you. Well, our top story this morning, the wildfires ravaging California. The worst wildfire in state history is burning just north of Sacramento. Crews are calling this the Camp Fire. It's already scorched more than 100,000 acres and killed more than two dozen people. Fire crews from all over the country are rushing to help, including crews from both Oregon and Washington. Christine Pitawanich is following the latest for us. Christine, we know the dry conditions and strong winds there are definitely not making things easy for firefighters. Good morning, Drew, Ashley. Yeah, the weather conditions really tough, and it looks like the strong winds may last through today and probably into tomorrow. Right now, fire crews are battling flames in both northern and southern California. As you just heard, the campfire, the one burning just north of Sacramento, Further south, the Woolsey Fire, that one near Los Angeles. Then there's the Hill Fire in Ventura County. The largest of the fires is the Camp Fire. It is the state's deadliest in 85 years. It started on Thursday, has killed more than two dozen people, and about 200 people are still missing. The flames have torn through the town of Paradise, absolutely decimating entire neighborhoods. Look at that. It's leveled more than 6,000 homes, too. This morning, we're hearing from people who are talking about their brush with death as they tried to escape the fast moving flames. And I called my husband and I never get reception in this area. That was a miracle. I was able to call my husband and I'm crying hysterically. And I said, I said, Nick, I'm going to die. I, I can't get out of my car. It's on fire. I'm going to die. And he says, don't die. Run. Get out of your car and run. Oh my gosh, so scary. You know, she just did that though. She ran, stumbled across a fire truck and banged on the door. She says the firefighters inside came out, extinguished her pants, pulled her into the truck and told her to brace herself because they might not make it. Back to you. Thank you, Christine. The Today Show is tracking the latest developments on the California wildfires. You can catch their full coverage starting at 7 o'clock this morning. Right now it's 6.04. Portland police, an officer is in the hospital this morning after a man allegedly hit him in the head with a pipe over the weekend. The suspect, 36 year old Sagay Abraha, will be in court on Tuesday. So before attacking the officer, he allegedly hit a woman named Amanda Russell. She asked us not to show her face, but she says Abraha hit her in the arm with the pipe as she sat on her front porch. She says that she ran inside and locked the door before he smashed the glass. Russell says the man is homeless and she believes he needs help more than he needs punishment. I feel like we do need more resources. I mean, I, I know right now he's incarcerated and in jail, and I find that we're spending lots of tax money on him being in jail, but how does that help his mental state? Does that help him rehabilitate? 
Russell has a bruise on her arm, but it was worse for the officer who was hit in the head and seriously injured. He called an ambulance for himself and then arrested a Braha. It is 6.05 now. Hundreds of people gathered over the weekend to remember Hartley Anderson, the Vancouver girl who died earlier this month. Yesterday, the organization Bikers Against Child Abuse escorted her body to a celebration of life service in Longview. On Friday night, family and friends held a candlelight vigil at Leroy Hagen Memorial Park in Vancouver. Investigators believe Ryan Burge killed Hartley. He was dating Hartley's mom. This morning, he's in jail on $5 million bail. It is five minutes after six o'clock now. It's also time for this morning's viewer voice poll. So the nationwide debate over plastic straws is hitting the Rose City. Leaders here will vote on the issue Wednesday, so we want to know what you think. Here's the backstory. The city council will discuss a new ordinance making plastic straws and utensils only available by request. So the Bureau of Planning and Sustainability came up with this proposal. Officials decided against an outright ban on plastic straws because some people with disabilities rely on plastic straws to drink. The ultimate goal is to reduce single-use plastics and the environmental damage they cause. If adopted, this new rule would take effect July 1st of next year. So let us know what you think. Should Portland restrict plastic straw use? You can weigh in right now by going to KGW.com vote or click on the Vote Now tab in the KGW News app. It is 6.06, .06, time for some more news headlines in your morning rush. A statewide vote recount is underway for three major races in Florida, including the governor's race. The recount was ordered Saturday after results showed Republican Ron DeSantis winning the gubernatorial race by less than half a percentage point. Republican and former governor Rick Scott was winning his race for Senate by even less than that. The Democratic challengers are refusing to concede. County elections offices have until Thursday to finish that recount. The U.S. bound migrant caravan in Mexico is moving north toward Tijuana today. The 1600 mile journey will place them right across the border from San Diego. Hundreds of migrants are hitchhiking, piling onto trucks and even clinging to the side rails of trailers to travel north. Hundreds gathered in Ogden, Utah to honor Major Brent Taylor, the town's mayor who was killed in Afghanistan. Taylor was a member of the National Guard and died while serving on a NATO mission. He took a year off as mayor for deployment back in January. President Trump joined other world leaders in Paris to mark 100 years since the end of World War I. French President Emmanuel Macron issued the occasion use the occasion rather to warn about the dangers of nationalism. That's a term President Trump has used to describe his own politics. Later this morning, thousands will take part in and watch Portland's annual Veterans Day Parade. It starts at Northeast 40th and Tillamook and it will end eight blocks away at the flagpole in front of the Ross Hollywood Chapel. The parade starts at 930. That is your morning rush. Right now it's time for your morning talker. A wounded veteran got some redemption on Saturday night after SNL's Pete Davidson made a controversial joke. It happened last weekend during an election themed segment of Weekend Update. Davidson made a joke about former Navy SEAL and newly elected Congressman Dan Crenshaw's eye patch. Davidson took a whole lot of heat for it. On Saturday night, SNL invited Crenshaw to the show for a little bit of payback. He got to roast Davidson and tell a few jokes of his own. Check it out. Not bad. So there, we're even. All right. Hold on, well, let, one more. This is. The, All right. All he right. looks like a troll doll with a tapeworm. <laughs> yeah, man. All right, that's good. We should wrap this up. Oh, hold on. No, this, this is fun. This is fun. Cool. He looks like Martin Short in the Santa Claus 3. <laughs> By the way, one of these people was actually good on SNL. Oh, that is great. <laughs> he did a great job. Crenshaw wears that eye patch okay, because of an injury that he received when an IED learn. exploded Not in Afghanistan. Right hey, stay tuned. He's going to be on the Today Show this morning to talk more about Americans this story. You can watch the interview starting at 7 o'clock. I think that's the perfect way to handle right. that. No, I think it's kind SNL, of a teachable moment. Yeah. They definitely just wrote the book on how to apologize to someone. Yeah. I mean, that was classic. Nicely done. And, and he did it well. Funny. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he did. Really ripped him.